How do you figure out how much it costs to use an electric space heater in your home? What kind of safety tips do you need to know when using electric space heaters to avoid some hidden dangers? If you're a homeowner, I'm going to teach you what a watt meter is or a power meter is today so you can plug in your space heater and know exactly what it's going to cost per day or per month. And I'm going to teach those technicians out there, if you don't know how to use a voltmeter, I'm going to show you how to use a voltmeter and do a simple formula to figure out how much an electric space heater or any type of heater that uses electricity costs per day or per month. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad, let's get started. Now let's go over the most simple method for calculating the cost of our electric space heaters. And that is using an energy meter or a watt meter. If you're a technician, this may be something you want to keep in your van, your truck. If you're a homeowner, I would definitely get one of these. This is very simple and you can at least know the cost associated with the heater that you have chosen, right? So this is the box right here. It says HBN plug-in power energy meter. Go get one, I'll put the link right here and I'll put it in the description. So we're gonna be using the Dreo smart wall mounted heater. This is a small heater and it probably won't be using as much electricity as this tower heater. This is also DREO, Dreo, and this is a two-in-one fan and heater. Now, let's plug in our energy meter. Right here, boop. When you plug in, I love the fact that it displays voltage. If you click the Hertz button, you can see the Hertz. You're not going to see any cost right now because we don't have anything plugged in. But let's go ahead and plug in our heater. Let's go ahead and put it on watts. But first, let me let you see the voltage. When we're not using anything as far as electricity, then you're going to see the voltage stay steady. But watch what happens when we start using electricity, right? So we're going to keep it on a wattage, but notice it was 122 volts. Now I'm going to take my little remote controller for my smart wall mounted heater and I'm going to turn the power button on. So now our wattage is climbing because we're starting to use this space heater. You can see the wattage is almost a thousand. It's probably going to be over a thousand in a moment, but look at our voltage. See our voltage? 118. It was 122. It pulled down to uh, 117. So it's pulled down to 117 from 122. So you can see that when you're using a heater, it's affecting your voltage. Now check this out. This is so cool. So if we hit the amp slash minus button, right? See, it's, it's pulling 1484, 85. It's pretty steady now. We're going to hit amperage. It's going to say 12, right? Let's go over to cost. All right, now let's push amp again. This is what it's going to cost us per year. 26.28 per month, $216. And then per week, 50 bucks per week for this to run. And then per day, $7. And then per hour, about 30 cents, 29 cents. So that is so cool. I hit the cost button, then I hit the amp button, and it showed me exactly how much this heater is going to cost. Now, using my dual induct psychrometer, you can see it's putting out about 147 degrees. Take a look where my telescoping probe is right there in front of the vent. That's a good amount of heat there, and you can it's blowing out to... It's blowing out at least a foot, so pretty nice. I like this heater. Let's go ahead and turn it off, and I'm gonna go ahead and check the tower heater's cost. Looks like we got a cool down period. It counts down from 30 seconds. That way it gets rid of the residual heat on the coils, the heating coils. I like this because you can actually use your phone and an app, and it's very small. We actually use this heater a lot. But I got another heater just so I could compare today using both heaters on the watt meter that we have. Let's test out the two-in-one fan and heat tower heater. Plugging it in, checking the voltage, should be 122. Plugging in the tower heater. And here's the remote controller. If you look up here, if you push the power button, boop, displays heat. We can push the mode button right here and we can change to eco mode or heat mode we can push the fan heat button we can do just the fan and there's 1 to 12 
and then we're gonna go to just heat although this thing blows pretty hard it blows I'd say at least probably 10 foot all right let's see go back to heat and then we got looks like five stages of heat there one two three four five let's push the mode button let's choose our temperature 90 degrees all right I'm gonna let this run for a minute and stabilize and then we'll be able to read the wattage. Looking at the meter here, it says 117 volts before it was 122. Pulled down about the same. Let's go to wattage, 1577. Let's go to amperage, 13 amps. Let's go back to cost and then amp minus. So $1,700 per year to run this heater, $144 a month, $67 per week, $9 per day. 40 cents per hour so it's going to cost about 10 cents more per hour to run this larger tower heater very cool let's check the heat output and then let's use our meter looks like we're putting out about 148 almost 150 degrees with the tower heater now, if we don't have a watt meter or an energy meter available, or maybe we're using a 230 volt appliance, maybe we're using a, a heat pump package unit or a heat pump split, and we're at a customer's house and we're a technician and we've got a voltmeter, we can actually use that voltmeter, a calculator, and we can figure out with a simple formula how much they're going to spend using that 230 volt appliance maybe or that heat pump. So, what we're going to do is we're going to find our breaker first. We're going to be using single pole, probably 20 amp breakers, because that's typical in a home that supplies the receptacles. We're not going to be using a two pole or a double pole breaker that usually provides 220. We're looking at a single pole. And we're going to check between ground, right here, ground, and the top breaker first. So, what do we got? We got 125 volts. So that's not the breaker. How do we know that's not the breaker? Because when we're using that electric space heater, we pulled down the voltage. I'm thinking it should be less than 120, probably 118, 19, 17. So now let's check the second breaker. What we got? 119. So that could be our breaker. I'm going to check these other two right here. This one says... 119 this breaker says 124 so it's not these two it's likely these two so how do we figure out which one it is we're going to take our meter we're going to hit aac and then we're going to cl clamp that clamp around the wire that goes to that breaker what are we pulling 13.86 amps now let's go to the other one this one was 1.5 all right so that means it's likely this breaker. So now that we've got our two readings that we need, one of them being the voltage, which was 119, and then one of them being the amperage, which was 13, we're gonna take and multiply those. 119 volts times by 13 amps. That's gonna give us wattage. It's probably gonna be around 1500 watts. Then we're gonna divide the 1500 by 1000 to give us kilowatt hours. So if we do 1,000 divided by 1,500, it's going to be about 1.5, right? So 1.5 is our kilowatt hours. Then we take that and we multiply it by how much we're charged from the electric company, which around here it's 10 cents. So 1.5 times 10 and then times the amount of runtime. So let's do that formula real quick. Here we go. So let's take the amperage, which was about 13.8 times by the voltage, I think was 119, gives us wattage, 1,642 watts, divide that by 1,000 to get kilowatt hours, and then we've got 1.6, times by what we're charged, which is about 10 cents, and then times that by 24 hours, that's about three, to, well, about $4 per day, so we can say that heater is going to cost us $4 per day, and then if we times that by 30, it's going to be about 120 bucks a month. Then we can do the yearly calculation times by 12, about $1,400 a year. We can't end this video without talking about safety. And as a homeowner, you might not know the safety tips required to actually use an electric space heater in your home. Number one is you want to have smoke detectors or smoke alarms. 
You gotta make sure that if you do have a fire, that you have a safety device that can alarm you, especially if you're gonna use electric portable space heaters and you're gonna have more than one in your home plugged in overnight. Because you may not wanna use it at night, but if you choose to, you gotta have a smoke detector, right? Number two, you wanna make sure if you're using these electric heaters, you have your combustibles three foot away. So if you got cardboard, three foot away. You got wood, three foot away. You got paper, three foot away. You got a couch. I don't have a couch. If I did, I'd tell you three foot away. It's dangerous to have something right here or maybe next to the cord. You gotta make sure all combustibles three foot away from your electric heaters. Then you wanna make sure that you don't use this to plug in your heater. This right here probably won't even handle your heater's wattage or the amperage, and this is known as a power strip. Notice that the breaker that powers the receptacles is rated for 20 amps, and it would handle these heaters just fine. If you pull more than 20 amps, which this is pulling 13, if you pull more than 20 amps, that breaker is going to trip. I don't know if this power strip is going to uh, turn off. I don't think it's going to. But take a look right here on the back. It says max wattage was 1600 for this. And then max amperage is 6 amps. So don't use one of these with your electric heater. Three foot away. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's see what happens when we plug these two heaters into a power strip like this. See, they're plugged in, and you can see it's on. Now let's turn them both on and see what happens. Power. Power. And they're both on. And wattage. Looks like it's climbing. It's 800. And it's 2,000. Let's see if our thermal imaging camera is picking anything up. Ooh, core's getting hot. And look what just happened. This just clicked off. Now let's go check the breaker. So the breaker is still on. It did not trip. And you could see that we were over 2,000 watts and the power strip actually turned off. That's pretty nice. But not all power strips will turn off, so don't trust your power strip. Let's see what happens when we plug in both of our heaters to one receptacle. Power and power. Let's wait just a moment, let them get running, and then we're going to check it with our meter. Now look at our meter. We're clamped around the wire that feeds that receptacle, and it's 31 amps. Is that more than what this breaker's rated for? Absolutely, it's only rated for 20 amps. Why is it not tripping? I don't know. Now let's look at a thermal imaging camera and look, we've got heat on that wire and we've got heat on that breaker. Oh, and I think I just saw 124 degrees. Look right here, it's over 100 degrees. So this is dangerous because that breaker is not tripping. And what if it just keeps heating up and heating up and heating up and then that wire just burns in half? Look, the wire even going out of the box is hot. Wow, that's not good. All right, so right after I pushed the stop button on the camera, this breaker tripped. Take your finger, touch the wire. The wire is hot. Breaker, breaker's hot. So the breaker did trip. It did its job and it wasn't too late but you can see the dangers associated with using too many electric space heaters in your home, especially on the same circuit. If you need an electric space heater like this tower heater, stay tuned for the giveaway in February. I'm actually gonna give away this heater, do giveaways every month. Go check out my live videos to learn more. Hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something, and I hope that this video helps you to be more safe in your home using space heaters like these. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. If you learned something in today's video, let me know what it was that you learned down in the comments. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. If you like this video and you want more videos like this, I've got a playlist titled HVAC Tips for Homeowners. 
with a couple hundred videos on that playlist. And then I've also got a playlist just for technicians to learn more about HVAC in the field with over 700 videos on that playlist. So go check out that playlist titled HVAC Tips for Technicians. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me. <laughs>